Currently, the CDC is characterizing the risk to humans of this avian influenza outbreak as low. So we're, we're, on a scale of one to 10, we're probably at a one or a two. Um, now, the concern is, is that we're seeing not only millions of infections in commercial poultry and backyard bird flocks that humans frequently come into contact with, we're also seeing higher rates of infection in mammals. Yeah, so the birds will uh, transmit avian influenza through their own respiratory mucosal secretions, much like we think about with other respiratory viruses in humans, or through contaminated feces, and so a bird can become infected by exposing uh, themselves to contaminated soil or feces. For humans, the Transmission so far has been very rare and infrequent. Uh, there's only been two documented cases of avian influenza in the United States, one in Colorado and most recently in Texas since 2022. And those individuals have been infected by coming into very close contact with animals who have avian influenza. So the thought is that if the animal is infected, sick, dying from avian influenza and a person comes in contact with that animal, there could be respiratory secretions that they become exposed to, or uh, there might be a contaminated surface, uh, or they may come in contact with the animal species and then inoculate the virus into their eyes, nose, or mouth and become exposed that way. So what's interesting is that in the wild migratory birds, they have no or very little symptoms at all. It's, it's actually a reservoir for the viruses, those wild migratory birds. Now in commercial poultry, uh, backyard bird flocks, that's where we see more severe disease. And we've actually seen over 60 million commercial poultry and backyard bird flocks have to be cold or uh, have died from avian influenza infection. Now in a human, Avian influenza can present very similar to a normal human influenza infection. So we think about respiratory disease. Oftentimes it's a lower respiratory tract infection. Uh, this most recent case in Texas, the patient only described conjunctivitis, which is redness in the eyes. So it can you know, be a spectrum of symptoms from asymptomatic to mild illness like runny nose cough, conjunctivitis, or more severe disease, lower respiratory tract infection. Now, the key preventative measures for people to take is to not come in contact with a sick or dead animal, especially birds. If you own a commercial poultry farm, if you had backyard bird flocks, and you have birds that are sick or have died, do not come in contact with them, and if you have to, it's important to take some, uh, some necessary precautions. Eye protection, such as uh, goggles or a mask, uh, N95 mask, and then gloves. Those are going to help prevent an individual from coming into contact with the virus, either through those respiratory secretions or by self-inoculating the virus from a contaminated surface into their eyes, nose, or mouth. Again, I would just emphasize that at this point, the overall risk is low, that we know that this is transmitting among wild birds. It's infecting millions of commercial poultry and backyard bird flocks. We've started to see infection in many types of mammals, very rare incidents in humans so far, but we just need to approach this with a sense of preparedness and put those tools in place that in the event we see sustained higher rates of transmission in humans, we can rapidly deploy those tools and prevent it from becoming a worldwide problem.